Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. I am Jeff. This is Will to Live Outdoors and today we are going to discuss lemons. No, not the fruit. No, and we're not making lemonade. We're talking car lemons. Specifically, 2017 HSC Lux TD6 Discovery 5 Land Rover that I purchased in June of 2020. And Boy, do I have a story to tell. So pull up a chair. I'm going to catch you up to speed. And we are going to discuss just everything that was wrong with this vehicle. All right. For those that are new here, a real quick recap. Uh, this vehicle was purchased in June of 2020. It uh, was a hard-loaded HSC Lux TV6 diesel Land Rover Discovery 5. It was purchased in Alabama and it was a uh, dealer of, called RMR 4x4, and these guys were really easy to work with, um, have a extensive um, inventory of Land Rover products and other cool, unique four-wheel drives. It was, uh, was nothing bad to say on, on their end. Um, it had everything that we were looking for. Um, the only thing that it did not have was, uh, it didn't, didn't have the owner's manual and it didn't have the window sticker. But it did have two sets of keys, an activity key, and it also had both headphones for the entertainment system. Zero issues uh, all through the summer. Um, everything was, uh, was great. There was one instance where my wife was uh, driving it. They had to get off of a highway onto a uh, gravel road. It's a little bit of a steep grade coming off and uh, uh she had a four or five people in the car felt like something bumped really hard underneath we know now what that was but at that point in time that was the first time we had heard it so it was just unusual about a month or so after that get in the vehicle and, and, and go for a little, a little drive one minute or so into it and the restricted performance light came on um, it did clear and uh, we uh, was, I believe this was on a Sunday. So on the next available, next working day, we called the uh, dealer we had a relationship with, which was in um, uh, south of us, and it's in Louisiana, and uh, scheduled to have the vehicle towed because they did not feel comfortable with it driving since it was the restricted performance light that came on. Um, once it was there, uh, they did some checking. They wanted, we just wanted to make sure it was actually a certified pre-owned. Yes, it was. Um, there was no, well, there wasn't a record of the actual services being up to date. So to be able to get that in the system and everything, I just went ahead and decided to go ahead and let them do a full um, fluid, uh, do the oil and filter, um, the def the def tank they put the def fluid in did some other things did a multi-point inspection um realigned the hood because it was um a little off on one side and uh let's see seems like uh they were able to determine after it had been there for a couple of days that the restricted performance light uh was uh coming on because there was a deformed air cooler pipe which uh, needed to be replaced and this was just a few months into the COVID problem so supply wasn't necessarily working against us at that point in time um, but uh, they had it back to us in about nine days and everything seemed relatively good we just thought that was going to be some sort of a random issue that just uh, popped up and we would have that re uh, restricted performance would be a thing of the past not the case so fast forward to service visit number two all right so after the first service visit we felt like okay we've got this under control it's going to be good everything's going to be great no issues mind you this would be our I don't know how many Land Rovers we've had. So it's not something that I'm scared of. I don't buy into the hype of it being a problematic vehicle uh, or a nameplate that's just not trustworthy or whatever you want to say. I do think, though, that there could potentially be, in the world of Land Rover, uh, the training element, maybe something uh, might be missed. 
it's just some, it seems like maybe they just rush technology. They put it out too fast. I do know that like in this case with this vehicle, it just seems like a lot of this could have been cured if there would have just been a little bit more thorough. That could be just a dealership problem. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, all I can tell you out there though is that if you're just persistent and you stay on top of it, maybe you would save yourself some of the frustration that I had to go through and that would be worth it. On or around September the 25th of 2020, we had the restricted performance come back on yet again. And so uh, I believe at this time they actually um, uh, scheduled for it to come in on the 6th of October and we were going to um, tow it uh, to them. So that we did. So it just basically sat, it wasn't driving or anything. And uh, we were just waiting until we could get it in. And I, you have to understand this was when we were still having COVID lockdowns and everything. So just things were a little off. Things were a little bit different. Uh, I, I, you know, I realized that. On the 6th, it goes down. Um, they try, they drive it. They drive it all over the place. Um, they're... Uh, 150 miles or so they put on the vehicle. They cannot get restricted performance to come back on. They cannot retrieve a code. So basically for um, over a month, they keep it and uh, try to get it to do something. And then finally on or around the 9th of November, they decide that, hey, your vehicle's ready to pick up. We don't anticipate that that's gonna come back on again. Should be good to go. We've had it back one day. Not even a full day. We got back last night. And we have restricted performance. Back on. Car cannot be driven. We'll have to be towed back. I was thoroughly irritated at this point because yet again, it's going to have to go back to the dealer. And so we get ready for service visit number three. If you watched our second video on CPO down, uh, start that off with a little walk around and um, talking about uh, this, this is the craziest thing ever. Um, it's been here for less than 12 hours and it's already going back again. I just, um, I'm at a loss. I'm like, this is crazy. I've never had this issue with the Land Rover. And so um, while we're waiting on the tow truck to get there, I'm going around. Um, also at this point, I find that, uh, the, um, the little hidden compartment that's behind the climate control, uh, sticks. And so, um, that's something that gets added to the list of things to, uh, to get, uh, checked out. And so, um, again, it goes back to, for the third time. And I've got a list of things at this point <laughs> that uh, that we got to start to talk about. So uh, we are going to now discuss uh, trip number three. Until we meet again, Disco. Until we meet again. All right. Now let's run down a list of the things that are going to get looked at and hopefully uh, fixed at this point in time. They open up a TA case and that's where they get uh, technical assistance from um, an engineer. They elevate the uh, this uh, to try to come up with a solution. So the vehicle was towed on the 13th, and this is uh, D this is November the 13th of 2020, and they've opened up a TA case. There was not a loaner available. So again, we're without a vehicle um, going on probably our third full month without a vehicle um, out of the five months we've owned the vehicle. <laughs> it's comical. It really is. Uh, so anyway, uh, things that were actually uh, fixed or determined to be in error at this point in time, uh, the TA case, uh, they found out that it was a manifold pressure sensor. It had carbon buildup, so I believe they changed it. Uh, it got new O-rings. In, I guess, a lot of the test driving that they were having to do um, when they had it there, uh, it also developed a broken windshield. However, as they phrased it, it had a leak that they noticed, which was odd because it hadn't leaked any on us, but uh, whatever. New windshield, so that was great. Uh, so they replaced the windshield. All of this was under warranties, no charge to me. 
uh, they fixed that uh, secret compartment while they had it there. Um, they did call and they had a loaner available on December the 7th. And since it had been well over a month at this point, I thought better, better go ahead and get that because there's no guarantees that it's going to be anytime soon. And so we made a special trip to go retrieve a um, loaner. And three days later, they're like, hey, your vehicle's ready. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So what was the point in getting that loaner? But uh, anyway, it was it was nice nonetheless. Uh, nice gesture anyway. Uh, so everything is smooth. We uh, get into uh, 2021. Um, still not having any issues. Uh, that is until decided to, uh, to drive that vehicle and go on a really cross-country road trip to go pick up a Range Rover that my buddy Aaron had bought in Dallas, Georgia. And I'm going to show actual video of when the restricted performance came on. We're going to run that right now. I think that pretty much, uh, well, that's not good news. It's, uh, means that's got to go back in. And kind of not really in a situation where I can uh, have this towed back in so it's just gonna have to wait hopefully it'll uh, cycle out here in a minute uh, that was the uh, 13th of March 2021 and we are significant amount of mileage from home it is a Saturday morning and I just felt like at this point if the stupid thing blows up it blows up <laughs> I'm just tired of messing with it so it just pulled over, uh, cycled the key. It did go away. Um, it drove, it seemed like, perfectly the rest of the time, and uh, off we went. However, during that trip, I was uh, filling up and actually noticed uh, the strangest, it was kind of bizarre, uh, the gas tank, or the fuel tank, um, had smoke coming out of it when I was putting diesel in. I'm not sure if anybody out there in YouTube world has ever seen anything quite like this, but uh, if you can see, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I had already filled up about halfway before I even noticed it, but... Uh never seen that on anything. Uh, not exactly sure what that's from. I don't know. It's a new one on me. They did uh, agree that that's nothing to be concerned with but it is unusual we had let them know that uh the, that it had triggered um on the 13th of march but i think it was just like let's just wait and see what happens at this point i was really think that they were just hoping that it would just blow up the motor or something crazy would happen just so they would have something to make it identify and know what to fix <laughs> this is my two cents uh anyway uh they were also going to check for their that noise um that I told you about earlier, uh, that, that's uh, identified that it was coming out of the transfer case. And I'm gonna actually play a clip here that I made um, right at this time. I actually sent this clip to them so they could understand what it was we were hearing. See if you hear it. Daddy, what are you doing? Daddy, what are you doing? What are we doing? I'm trying to catch this thing making noise. That's what I'm trying to do. There it went. Oh. What they decided to do was replace and flush the transmission, the transfer case fluid. They noticed that the windshield pillars were um, incorrectly installed when they changed the windshield. They tried to bill me for that, but then I was like, I wasn't the one that replaced the windshield, so it's kind of like on you, and they did decide that they would go ahead and cover that. I, I guess that was it. Uh, the um, Restricted performance, though there was no resolution there, um, they could not determine anything about that. So nothing was done. Um, at this point, 
I did bring up that I would be interested in possibly getting out of this vehicle if there was any way possible if they could help us out. Um, their unbelievably low appraisal was uh, performed, um, <laughs> which told me they wanted no part of that vehicle. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, just at this point, I'm like, all right, this, this is crazy. I don't really know what to do with the vehicle. It's just kind of like, uh, you know, it's, I didn't feel comfortable trying to sell it to somebody. Uh, so we just carry on. I'm like, eventually somebody's going to figure out what's wrong with it. Uh, those pillars for the windshield, the windshield finishers were back ordered and they came in in July early July of 2021. Those were installed. Again, ask them about the noise at the transfer case because it was back after they had did their um, flush and refill. Uh, unwilling to take it any further at all. They just said that uh, there was nothing wrong with it. Okay, so that's suspect, but uh, whatever. Um, so that's what we went with. They, uh, just to make us feel better, I actually checked the suspension, checked some other things that they said could be possibly that could make that noise, but uh, no. But still did it uh, after that, and we'll find out if that ever got fixed. Just bear with me. Late September of 21, it was due for a large service this would have been probably the uh, 36K or the 30,000 mile service, uh, somewhere in that. Uh, they did uh, allow us a loaner car. Uh, they had it for three or four days there. Um, the uh, rear noise, there was no movement on that. They did an alignment, it still made that noise. So it's just getting narrowed down. And let me explain to you what it would actually do. Um, you could be going in a straight line and the uh, um, you could pull up your four by four pages uh, that shows your locking differentials, the center differential and the rear differential on dry pavement for no apparent reason whatsoever. The center would lock and then the rear would lock on dry pavement. And literally when it would do that, you could feel it was like gear bind and it would just like, it would bind up. This is running it and just the auto setting, you take it out of auto setting and just put it in normal, whatever. I mean, it did not matter. It just did, did this on dry pavement, uh, would just bind up and it would make this, boom, make this, you know, very strange uh, that I just knew they had to hear it. They had to feel it. You just, anybody that's been around cars. I mean, if you get in it and you, you feel it in your butt like that, you you know, that's just, that's something that, um, that's abnormal. I mean, people that had never driven and ridden in the vehicle before would, would hear it. Um, but at any rate, so that service was trip number six. That was elective service. And uh, let me give you a grand total of what was done at that point in time. Trip number six, we did a, another multi-point inspection. Uh, customer states you can feel, hear a thump, like something is missing or kicking. Happens in a parking lot, like it is sputting or struggling. Happens at about three to five MPH. Accurate, that's what happens. Uh, but the funny thing is, the original, original owner at 3,000 miles and at 6,000 miles had basically stated the exact same thing. So we were not the only ones that had experienced it. It just was not able to fix it. Uh, customer states vehicles pulling to the right and alignment was performed. Customer request annual service. Please change oil and filter and top off all fluids. Please check def levels. Please replace cabin air filter. They charged $100 of labor for a cabin air filter. Folks. They're easy to replace. I mean, just do it yourself. I should have done it myself. But in good faith, I felt like if I'm spending money with them, they would help us out and try to get this thing covered under warranty and figure out what was wrong with the vehicle. And I was just mistaken. Because <laughs> it wasn't going to happen. Not with them anyway. Uh, 
Please replace engine air filter. Labor, $68.95. And they charged $81 for an air filter. Um, it's just wasted money on my part, man. That's like, that's just crazy expensive and anybody can replace those. And I mean, even if you bought an actual Land Rover filter and did it, I mean, you can do it yourself in 20 minutes, you're finished. Replace the fuel filter. All right, now the fuel filter, probably could have done that as well, but the uh, fuel filter, I just let them do it because they're gonna have to prom, they have to probably prom that and everything. I didn't wanna have to mess with it. Uh, but uh, $1,200 later, we got the vehicle is back and hopefully it's got a clear bill of health and everything's good. Maybe those lights are never gonna come back on. Oh, is that wrong? So that brings us to trip number <laughs> trip number seven. All right, trip number seven. This is uh, the restricted performance light came back on. It was October the sixth, and it happened again at about seven thirty in the morning. They scheduled a loaner for eleven fifteen. So. We basically went from October the 6th to the middle of November, just having to continue to drive the vehicle um, because there was just, they, they couldn't get it in. They uh, got a loaner on November the 15th. They replaced the, uh, um, the tailgate little divider thing that, that lowers and comes up. It, 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 uh, it malfunctioned and uh, they went ahead and replaced that for us. That was under warranty. Uh, so at 33,000 miles, that restricted performance light had came on. That was in October. I'm assuming that's probably in October the 6th and we continued to drive it. They hooked up the Pathfinder system to it. They were unable to find anything. And then now this is where it starts to rub me wrong. They charged us $160.88. And at their urging, we brought the vehicle in. The customer states there is a kick in the rear. It happens going through drive through and neighborhoods. Um, still the same problem. Customer states bottom trunk shelf will not fold down. That was, recovered, that was covered under warranty. Brakes have 20% to 50% brake pad remaining. Future service is recommended in the form customer. Uh, the odd thing about that is uh, the brakes had been already replaced. Uh, this was um, from a previous time and they just assumed that uh, I guess I had not uh, performed that yet. So 206.84 and at this point I'm like, I'm done with these guys and I'm just, I just refuse to go back to that dealer. So if it happens again, I'm gonna find someplace else to take it. I need to take it to Dallas or to Little Rock. And so I'm trying to, at this point, start to vet different service <laughs> departments um, to see what will be the best plan of attack if something else happens. Let's uh, get into 2022 here and uh, we'll, uh, we're will we getting close to the end, so just bear with me. All right, I'm just gonna try to wrap this up as quick as possible. So the eighth um, issue that we had with the restrictor performance, um, it came on during Christmas it came on also in January. Then it came on once again, um, 3 8 of 22. And at this point, it's like, uh, I feel like it's, it's just, it's now or never. It's going to have to be fixed, um, or I'm going to drive it into a lake. I mean, it's just it's something's got to happen. The final straw. And that occurred on 3 27 of 22. We uh, made some phone calls and we decided that uh, based on talking to um, Little Rock Land Rover dealer, that uh, they would be more than capable of uh, taking this task on. I'm gonna let this video end right here. I'm getting rather tired and in an effort to go ahead and get this video published and up on YouTube, I'm just gonna call it quits at this point. We will pick it up when we're going to the dealership to pick the vehicle up from 
warranty repairs. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Jeff. This is Will to Live Outdoors, and thanks for watching.